All right, welcome back. This time we're at it with another playthrough from another game. Now this game, I actually have no idea what it's about. Um, I was just happen to go on through my games and stuff, and this is a game that I bought but never played. And I, I really have no idea what the hell it's about. It's um, I, like it's called the um, fuck, what was it called? The story of Insmooth or something? I don't know. From what the description, kind of what I got is like you're supposed to go around the game and like figure out um the history of Innsmouth or something. However you pronounce the city. I'm sure it'll tell us how to pronounce it. But uh it does have music to the game. Like uh here, I'll let y'all hear it for a minute. Like that's the music. Creepy as hell sounding. But I'm cutting it down because I don't know if it's copyrighted or not and I ain't trying to get my video took down. Uh so it's the feather. Trophies. And that's the credit. No, no, what was this? Yeah, the city of Innsmouth is what this is. Select the location to refresh your memories. So I don't know if this is like open world or what this is. Like, I, I genuinely actually have no idea. So we're just going to hop right into it and start a new game. Boston, Massachusetts, your office. We are fans of the strange world of Innsmouth, but we recognize the problematic beliefs of H.P. Lovecraft. This game has been produced by a group of people who believe in inclusion and equality. Uh, raw, robot pumpkin games and assemble entertainment. Okay, okay. I see a... Do we... Do we, Wait, shit. Do we need the sounds? Nah, it doesn't even play it, but, uh, okay, it doesn't speak or nothing, so, your progress is the story, your progress in the story will be saved at the end of each chapter, there are 35 chapters, in god damn, 35 chapters, at the end of a chapter, the screen fades to black and a green save icon appears at the bottom right of the screen, it recommends you always end the game after such a save point to make sure none of your progress is lost, okay, okay, Boston, 21st, September, Oh, wait, 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 wait. Now let's see if it's talking. No, it still doesn't talk. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave the music off. The last rays of sunshine filter through the blinds of your empty office. The pathetic stench of whiskey, cold cigarette smoke, and canned ravioli fills the air. The screeching tires and constant beeping of car horns out there on the street tell you that there it's gone 8 p.m., People are on their way home, finishing their day. You should join them. You decide to stay at your desk, go home. Oh, it's one of these games where I get to decide the outcome. Okay, I'm going to stay at my desk. Your day was long and frustrating. You were running out of ideas on how to handle the calls of people who want money from you. A cold shiver runs down your spine as you flip through a pile of unpaid bills. On the top of the pile is a reminder from your landlady you're two months behind on rent. The next one is a three-figure invoice from a games company for an in-app purchases. You tried to claim them as business expenses in your last in investigation, but somehow your client refused to pay. Then there's a second reminder from your internet provider threatening to cut off your connection. You might take legal action without, because without internet you can't work or live. You really need more in-app purchases. Your lawyer, a cigarette, a little fresh air. I'm going to do a little fresh air. You're blind. You jerk open the blinds. Amongst the dust, the light, the last rays of light shine in your eyes like a laser sight of the spy flick. It takes a few seconds for your eyes to adjust. Your gaze settles on the horns in Hoover's pub across the street. How many simple jobs this dive has give you? Jealous wise, whose husbands you had to spy on. All you had to, all you had to do was lie in wait at the window and take pictures of them coming out with the dirtiest hole in the oof. Of the dirtiest hole in town, you close the window before you can see before you see anybody you know. <laughs> you breathe a deep sigh. It may not have been a successful day, but at least it's over. You are looking forward to a classic Friday night, watching old mystery series at home in sweatpants and getting drunk on cheap booze. Okay, okay. Since it's early afternoon, you have been staring at the foreboding bottle of liquor in the other end of the room. Up until now, a vague sense of professionalism has kept you from drinking yourself into oblivion. Now nothing stands in the way. 
Suddenly, you hear someone at the door. Who is it? The door cracks open with a timid creak. The unknown guest pauses, then, in a breathly and melodonic tone, you hear a woman utter, Hello? Your insides cramp. You suddenly realize that you haven't cleaned your office at all this year. <laughs> you invite her in. Fuck it. Invite her in. They wouldn't be here otherwise. By the light of the desk lamp, you now see more than a silhouette. A breathtaking woman lights up your office. No doubt older than 40, maybe even 50. Hard to say. Clad in black, a skin-tight dress culminating in a docilet that seems to defy the laws of gravity. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Uh, a smoky eye shadow as dark as algae wash ashore. Blonde, coined, wavy hair under a dark barrette. The faint light of the setting sun catches in the strands of her hair, and you wonder how many heads this woman must have turned during her prime. She's completely different than your usual customers. Nervous bankers and sweat stains under their armpits convince their wives that something has well, that convinced their wives has something going on at the moment. Every move she makes is more calculated gaze. Smooth as an ill, she walks towards you and sits down at the corner of your desk. Determined, she walks towards you, sits down on the corner of your desk, which is a little bold, makes you blush. Why would that mean? Is that not his job? I mean, he sits, oh, she sits on the corner of my desk. Okay, that's a little bold. Which is a little bold without asking you first, but as a professional, you're not giving anything away. She seems to want to play the seductive damsel in distress. The quiet and music voice of your, of your subconscious is pleased at this stranger. Maybe sharing your enthusiasm from film noir cliches. A far louder voice is surprised that this woman seems to think that a sexy pose and revealing clothes could win you over. And both voices agree that they don't like being manipulated. You don't think that the stranger perched on your table is trying to recover from a hard working day and is a lingerie model. And therefore you see no logical reason for her behavior. When she begins to speak, her voice is smoky and full of promise. My name is Delilah. Marsh, I'm looking for a private investigator. I was told you were one of the best. She extends her hand. Decline. Kiss her hand. You've come to the right place. Okay, so do I want to be a gentleman? That's the question. Do I want to be a gentleman, or do I, do I just like you've come to the right place, lady? You know what? It, it's I, I'll kiss her hand, whatever. You kiss her hand and waggle your eyebrows in the same manner you've seen so often in those classic movies. This woman moves in higher circles. And is used to luxury. You can tell by the strong smell of caviar she gives off. If you play this right, you might even be able to increase the fee for this case. <laughs> what now? Keep flirting. Get down to business. It's about my daughter. My daughter Tabitha. She has disappeared. You're pulling out paper and pencil. This is going to be a walk in the park. A walk in a, a walk in the kidnapped kids park. Well, when did you last see her and where? The woman puts on a fake smile. We live in Innsmouth. It's a small port town north of Arkham. You frown. That's a bit vague. What was your child doing when you last saw her? What hobbies does she have? Oh, you know, kid stuff. They just run around and play in their uh, yo-yos, that sort of thing. Delilah nervously combs her hands to her hair, so... Alright, alright. So she probably killed her daughter. She's nervous. So she did something to the daughter. Does your daughter have any friends, yo-yos? Uh, what about her father? What does your daughter look like? Why would I care about her fucking father? I mean, her daughter is missing, not the fucking... What does your daughter look like? She's only eight and the sweetest girl you can imagine. She's been missing without a trace since last week. None of her schoolmates have seen her and no one knows where she might have gone. She hands you a photo. Look at my little munchkin. Okay, okay. Good heavens, this is supposed to be a joke. Is that really the face of a child or a sh shoddy photo edit are you being filmed as part of a reality tv show a bit of stomach acid in the last bite of lunch slowly but surely made its way up into her the back of your mouth i mean they think the kid wouldn't even i'm not throwing up into the drawer of my desk I swallow that shit with narrow eyes you swallow the bile and involuntarily pull a face Delilah continues to look at you hopefully she obviously didn't notice your little mishap but that was close that could have been unpleasant I'm so desperate her eyes lock with yours. Don't don't you think there's something strange about your child? Ask more questions about the case. Man, ain't nothing strange. It's a fucking kid. Fucking. Okay, so. Uh, yo yo's, I guess. Hold on, yo yo's. Ring, ring. Can you hear that? It's the 90s calling them with their outdated toys back. 
Delilah blushes. Normally you would find this quite attractive, but this case missing but the case of a missing girl beckons you and you're utterly unconvinced by the way this woman pretends to be a mother. She remains silent. Comfort her, let the matter rest. I'll comfort her, fuck it. Something's fishy here. You haven't noticed for this sort of thing. That's why you became a private investigator, or to be more precise, that's why you took an online detective course. That for a one off fee provided the unnecessary qualification. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. It's time to take your visitor to task. You look at her most more closely. Why did you come to me? Innsmouth is several miles from here. Why do you want to hire me? I wouldn't even hire myself. She crosses her arms. What do you care? Do you want to be paid or not? Right now, I just want the truth. You're sticking to your principles. That's exactly what your instructor warned you about. Still, it feels good. Delilah takes a step back and releases her tightly crossed irons. I already tried loads of other investigators who seem true, who seem trustworthy, really, but no luck. That's why I'm coming to you. Ouch. Ask more questions about the case. Ask more questions about the case. Oh, fucking. Oh, does she have any friends? Does her daughter have any friends that she might be staying with? Classmates, sports club members, anything like that? She shyly, silently shakes her head. Very strange you ask about the girl at least had... You're about to ask... Very strange. You're about to ask if the girl had any imaginary friends, but you hold back. <laughs> uh, she combs her hair. So, could she be with her father? What about Tabitha's father? Are you separated? Often children reappear with family members. She sadly smiles. My little one cannot swim well enough for that yet. Your pen remains on the same spot as the notepad. What was that supposed to mean? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Like, yeah, yeah, what? Like, is your is your daughter, like, a fuck, is your, is her father a merman or some shit? Uh, she's about to continue. I'm gonna let her talk. <sighs> Delilah turns her gaze away from you and looks dreamily, no longly, out of the window. Her father was a fisherman, like most in a village. A few years ago, he went out to sea but never returned. His boat was washed ashore weeks later. His colleagues told me that he finally followed the call of the waves. You keep quiet for a moment. Deceased family members are always a sensitive subject. My sincere condolences. She seems calm. I somehow always knew that moment would come. I think my husband is in a better place now. And at some point, I'll join him. You take a closer look at Delilah's outfit. Judged by her behavior and clothes, you would have never taken her to be a fisherman's wife. You inquire about her financial situation, more details of the case. Well, hell, there ain't no other details of the fucking case, I guess. Let's, forgive me for asking, but what do you do for a living? Uh, her jaw tenses. I work in the Innsmouth Tourist Department. Why do you ask? For a widow single mom, be surprisingly well-dressed. You don't seem like someone who is handing out holiday brochures. Okay, so, both are kind of asshole responses. I mean, for a widowed single mom, you're surprisingly well-dressed. And then you don't seem like someone who is handling, who is handing out holiday brochures. I guess the first one shit. For a fisherman's widow and single mom, you're surprisingly well dressed. Either the tourism industry is more lucrative than I thought, or your husband was quite well insured. You take a theatrical break, or is there another explanation? Her smile, she smiles uncertainly. My family is wealthy, old money, and some of the local nobility. I don't understand that question I have to do with my missing daughter. Dirty money might have, might very well be connected to your daughter's disappearance. You know, that is, that is kind of a thing. It's not your business where you get your money from. It's not my business where you get your money from, but if the source is rather unorthodox, it might be related to your daughter's disappearance. You appear over your desk to take a better, to take her in a little better. Your face is serious and impenetrable, but inside your head, your inner Humphrey Boggart nerd feels incredibly cool. Her smile remains unchanged, but none of, but one of her eyelids started twitching. Nervous, nervousness perhaps, or did your questions make her angry? No, I had nothing to do with the illegal business. You lean back. Uh, I have no further questions, I guess. Oh, fucking. Uh, I had no further questions. You mumble more to yourself than to her. Delilah stretches her neck and peer perceptibly. No doubt she would like to look at your notebook. Your pen hovers over the notes you've taken. Missing daughter, dodgy lady. <laughs> That's it. You've worked with less. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I mean, if I reject the case, 
most likely the game's over. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> like, if I reject, you know what? Let's click it. I'm sorry, lady, but it's not for me. Even though your bank account balance is cr critical, you can't bring yourself to take this case. You know that it is said that it will be a mistake without knowing exactly why. Delilah seems to be annoyed by now. As she accepts your rejection without grumbling, she struts wordlessly out of your office and your life. Nearly time to go home. Finally, you stretch down to your couch. A black and white mystery series flickers on the TV. Your blood alcohol levels has reached that pleasant point beyond no longer able to drive. And still well before everything that went in has to come out again. Next episode, the TV asks rhetorically. Sure, go ahead. Next episode, to serve men. You sigh. If only the supernatural would knock at your door, you sure as hell wouldn't miss that opportunity. And boom, the game's over, just like that. <laughs> There's no fucking way. So this thing definitely has different endings and shit. Oh, that's fucking funny. Let's call it a day. You reject the mission. Adventure, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, so that's the first one. Load last chapter. Yeah, get me back to like, get me right back to where I reject her ass. Ah, oh, shit. We got to go through all this shit. Oh, oh lord. Okay, let's see here. Uh, what happens if I just go home? You, you breathe a deep sigh. It may have been a successful day, but at least it's over. You're looking forward to the classic Friday. Uh, yeah, we done read that. Don't make a sound. You freeze and hold your breath. No, no, no. Nobody will ruin your well-deserved evening. You're as quiet as a mouse. You listen intently. The woman just outside the door knocks again. Pretend to be a statue. Uh, pretend to be a statue. This is messing with your evening's well-deserved relaxation. You're not moving so with a little luck. The stranger will just give up. You hear the doorknob twist. Hide under the desk. With cat-like reflexes and speed, you usually only reserve for eating chocolate cake. You dive under your desk. Your nose presses against the worn office carpet. And you really should clean up at some point. You hear someone enter. If you're trying to hide from your clients, you should make you should make sure that your big butt isn't sticking out of your hiding place, idiot. You hear her walk in. The door slams shut. She's gone. You did it. <laughs> now you can finally go home, but you also found some small change in a half-empty tobacco pouch under the table. Today isn't so bad after all. You look out the window in the parking lot. A glamorous woman walks into a rental car and drives out of the parking lot at full throttle. You know, you wonder what she wondered. Whatever, it'll have to wait till Monday. <laughs> and then we never read this shit too. That's fucking hilarious, dude. So yeah, we yep, we just call it a day, huh? Oh, that's fucking funny. That's actually fucking hilarious. I'm not even gonna lie to you. So can we like kind of say that's the first one? You reject the mission, call it a day. So let's see here. Can we kind of? Nah, hell, we got a damn, we literally got, I haven't even started the game yet, holy shit. I mean, I have, but I haven't, if that makes sense. <laughs> fuck, I, I wish it would, like, let me start over, like, right when I told her, nah, I get the fuck up out of my shit, man. <laughs> okay, let's see here, we already know the letter in. Uh, stay at your desk, might as well, hell. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see here. You really need your lawyer. You look for your lawyer's phone number and find it on the overdue final reminder with a note that her services will no longer be available to you. Right, that sorry. You breathe a breath of sigh and have not been a successful day. At least it's over. <laughs> yep, uh, say who is it? Uh, you invite her in. Fuck it. I mean, ain't nothing else we can do. We just invite him in. Uh, let's see here. I wonder what happens if I flirt with her this time then. Because we already know she's a... I'm going to say it makes me blush. Let's see here. Makes you blush, which has never been a visitor partner derriere so skillfully on the corner of the desk. You hope that the cigarette butt the stranger has just set on won't leave any difficult stains. That dress looks expensive. When she starts talking, her voice is uh, so, yeah, smoky and full of promise. Uh, kiss her hand. Yeah, we're, we're going to flirt with her this time. Fuck it. Keep flirting. Nothing is quite as attractive as a heroic private investigator. You think to yourself while at the same time secretly trying to remove a piece of Spinach lodged between your teeth. What's a smart lady like you doing in a disgusting office like this? This is your office, uh, Delilah replies, bemused. Your smile and nod slowly. Damn, you should change the subject quickly. <laughs> Take her out for dinner, pay her a compliment. Pay her a compliment, fuck it. Uh, her dress, her eyes, um, 
I guess her eyes, so you lean forward, your visual looks at you expectantly, ma'am, if you don't mind me saying, you have the most beguiling eyes I've ever had the fortune of looking to, <laughs> I can't get enough of them, Delilah absentmindedly touches her cheek, a smile pulling around the corners of her mouth, uh, not bad, go on about, go in for the jugular, go for the jugular, go on about her eyes, you get up and walk around the table without letting her out of your sight for a second. The woman looks at the door attentively, then back at you. Touches the strand of her hair and tucks it behind. You take her hand into yours and say, suggestively, True Beauty, a thousand dollars a day plus expenses. True Beauty. Uh, yeah, cause I, if I say a thousand dollars a day, I'm pretty sure it's calling her a prostitute. <laughs> For I never saw a true beauty till this night. You whisper in her ear. She giggles. Oh, you, what happens next is a different story. And we won't go into it here. You know what happened after all you were there. <laughs> when you wake up in your bed the next day, your house, your hair tousled Delilah is gone. All that remains is an empty bottle of red wine and two opened frozen pizzas. One night stand. <laughs> oh my god, that was a trophy? Spent a night with Delilah, Jesus Christ. And a still warm... The hell did I just reach a new milestone? I don't know, I don't care about that, but um... And a still warm blanket video game console. Blanket, I guess. It was a dark and stormy night. The rain left the torrents. On your bedside table, you find an envelope marked expenses. And a photo of a strange looking girl along with a handwritten note. Explaining your mission, Delilah's little daughter has disappeared, and you're supposed to find her. An address to you, an address for you to deliver her to, is also cited. Nothing unusual here. A common case of a little girl running away from home after reading her first romance novel. Usually, they hide at the edge of the forest or in a library. Should be an easy case. You don't have much time to prepare. A quick search reveals that one bus goes to Innsmouth, and only once a day. The pattern emerges in your search. A few news items. Related to this little coastal town are all about missing persons. In addition, you find some rather old-fashioned articles that praise the coastal town as a secret holiday destination. The best fish, untouched beach, promenade, authentic fishing people are the recurring buzzwords. Delilah has given you the address at which you're supposed to drop off her daughter as soon as you find her. She also wrote down her phone number on the child's photo. You take another look at the picture before you pack your things. Yeah, I mean, hell, what's wrong with the fucking kid? I, I mean, the next morning, you travel by bus, because I'm not fucking walking, what the hell? Fucking. So now we're uh, Boston, 22nd September. Your journey begins as at a busy bus station. There is supposed to be a bus line that departs here to Ismith. Buses, you think to yourself, are not only environmentally friendly, means of transportation, but they're also using your wallet. Sadly, the departure boards aren't much help. New York, Maine, Rhode Island, a trace of Ismith as a destination. You wander around for a while until you notice a cleaner eating a sandwich on the side of one of the vending machines. You look around, talk to the cleaner. I'm going to talk to the cleaner. Fuck it. Can you, where can I find the bus to ends without letting go of his sandwich? The clear, cleaner points to an abandoned counter at the dingiest corner in the public bus station they can be capable of. The man gives you a nod indicating that somewhere that anything that, had, that can be said has indeed been said. You find the counter is elaborately decorated with cobbled. It's a bit early for Halloween preparations, but at least someone made an effort. At the moment, nobody seems to be here. You press your face against the plastic window and appear behind it. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? I had to go to Innsmouth. No one there. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a bus ticket appears on the counter. Might be, might the trip be free? <laughs> Should you leave a payment? Uh, I'll leave a donation. You're a Strach defender of the law. It goes without saying that you pay. You put a few coins on the bowl underneath the foggy glass window. Hopefully they won't be stolen by the next passenger. Even if someone were sitting behind the counter, you wouldn't be able to see them. It's just too dark. You're distracted for a few seconds, and suddenly there's some change on the counter. What's in the... What's that in amongst the coins? A small golden fishing hook? How strange. Where's the bus hiding? So, okay, so now we have figured out that... Uh... We probably need that fish hook. Uh, we do know just from the when we was fucking around with it that the father is dead, but he was a fisherman and she's a uh, tourism guide or some shit. But in this current game, this current playthrough, we don't know that though. We just have her phone number and we had a one night stand. So 
maybe if we end up dying, if we had to start it all the way over at the end, I'm going to be kind of pissed off. But I'll go through and I'll get back to the point to where we left off. And then I'll do it like that where um, we make sure we get all the good shit. Where's this bus hiding? In between polished greyhounds, travelers stowing their luggage, saying goodbye and dropping tiredly into their seats. There's a kind of dumpster. A dumpster with seat, uh, yeah, dumpster with windows and wheels. No, it's actually a bus. It's been on the rusty side, and even from a distance, you sense the, the strange smell it emits. Is that sulfur? <laughs> You're not convinced how this thing is supposed to drive. In its vicinity, everything is noticeably quieter than at the other bus stops. The people getting on show no sign of emotion. Nobody is trying to jump the queue here. Instead, the passengers move past the bus driver at a uniform speed, one after the other, shuffling up the creaking steps. Each two-seater bench is occupied by individuals, as if they want to make sure not to come in contact with their fellow passengers. The sign clearly, clearly says ends mouth. No departure times, no stopovers, just ends mouth. <laughs> Jesus, on the bus. Undecided, you're standing on the bus. You're standing on the stairs of the bus. Uh, show your ticket. You hand the driver the ticket, no reaction. At least you can't make out a reaction. The lighting is poor, and the shadow of his dusty driver's cap almost covers his face. You know something strange on his neck, but you can't quite make it out. What it might be, you're standing in the door waiting for an. And okay, and not anything. The sulfur odor has increased. A queue has formed behind you. No one is pushing or complaining. The people wait quietly and impatiently. I'm just going to keep walking. Fuck it. You shuffle sideways through the center aisle. You don't remember the bus looking this long from the outside. You are surrounded by two, by shabby two-seater benches, and some are already occupied. One traveler per row. The last bench is free. It looks like the upholstery is torn on some places, though, or has it been slid open? You can see springs with sharp wire edges and some sticky liquid seem to have leaked onto the floor. Ugh. <laughs> Why didn't you just sit down in one of the free rows? Here in the back, almost everything is occupied. Most passengers see they have purposely sat down in the aisle seats, blocking off the window seats. Maybe this is an opportunity to get a little closer to the common Ismith visitor. You guys cross the rows of seats, uh, sit down with someone, go to the rear bench. To the rear bench it is. You always have the cooler, cool outsider at least. That's what you like to tell yourself. So you take a back row, which you have all for yourself. This ride won't take that long, will it? You wish you had paid for a little more attention to the map. The smell of sulfur rises into your nose again. You try to sit down carefully without tearing your clothes on the wire springs of the seat. Suddenly a jolt. You can't balance, and you're pressed into your seat by the most... Mysterious of all invisible forces, gravity. The bus starts without any warning. Because of the abrupt start, a bunch of yellowed paper has rolled across the dirty floor right at your feet. You pick it up, look at that, a newspaper, Innsmouth Illustrated, from April last year. How useful. Read the newspaper, spread the newspaper on the seat. Read the newspaper, fuck it. According to the famous sticker, the subscriber of the newspaper was a certain C.G. Jung. The Innsmouth Illustrated actually offers a lot of entertaining articles. All these features and listicles give the impression that at the end of this trip you'll find yourself in an adorable up-and-coming tourist metropolis. The a real insider tip. Well, well, read some more. Put away. Read some more. Hell yeah. You decide to read every damn article in this paper. Preparation is everything. As you know, apart from that, you're bored as hell. You find out that Innsmouth has a boardwalk and that even the beach bar was open last year. Finally, you discover a crossword, which turns out to be quite difficult. A lot of fish-related terms. You see, see you later, what? Yep, you've got that one, but you get stuck on making pastries, but with H or Toll Road? Hmm, that's too difficult for you at the moment. You'll throw the newspaper in the corner. Finally, your eyes open the rest of the ride. You sleep peacefully. Uh, the bus leaves the country road and turns off a wooden sign that says "Ends Mouth" in the red flaky letters. The journey continues rather bumpily along a narrow dirt road littered with the numerous potholes. In the distance, some houses are already visible, seagulls circling the roofs of the outmost edge of the city. Slowly, all passengers take their bags from the s under the seats and get ready. Curious, you look through the front window to the side window. That's odd. The bus passes by a huge. What is that? Scrapyard? Parking lot? Why would something like that be right outside the city? You pass another wooden sign 
whose half-peeled riding reads Innsmouth Park and Ride Area. A lot of cars look like they've been sitting here for years. Sand covers some of the bonnets and windscreens. The front door of the bus opens with a squeak and you join the monotonous line of locals stepping onto the out of the bus as if in a daze. Almost walking the step, you get close to the exit and you walk down the steps. You have to protect your eyes from the sunlight. It turns out the windows of the bus are tinted. The other passengers shuffle off. Okay, so we're at a save point. Okay, okay. So we're at the town limits. Okay, okay. Finally, Ismith, you, you examine your surroundings while you stretch your legs trying to unwind from the stressful journey. No artist could have adequately captured the serenity and beauty of this place. The clear blue sky lights up the town square, which is paved onto bright limestone and surrounded by neo-colonial buildings. Remnants of the 19th century in New England, a fresh sea breeze, crying seagulls and local going on about their business. In the center square, water trickles from a fountain as you stretch your limbs and breathe the air. The clean air you suddenly started by the water feature right in front of you. The fountain is an enormous fish-like brass creature with its jaw lined open to shark like fangs. If that wasn't enough, there appear to be human bodies squirming underneath its massive claws. Their faces are as contorted as yours is right now. How long have you been standing here? Eyes wide open in shock, you utterly feel paralyzed. Uh, you start to scan the town square, notice more disturbing details. On every corner you spot ornamental statues and reliefs of fish. But these are not your classic harmless kind of fish. These are pagan symbols, the grimaces of supernatural creatures from the darkest crevices of the deep sea. In surrounding houses you can see faces pressed against the windows. All the locals appear to be watching you. You suddenly start to think that the cries of seagulls sounded particularly human like that. They sounded like humans crying out in pain. What happened to the Id idyllic scene from a few moments ago? Oof. Welcome to Innsmouth. Turn around. Ignore. <laughs> Turn around. What's up? What's good with it? <sighs> Welcome to Innsmouth. How nice of you to visit. A small elderly woman waves at you from afar. She beams at you as if you were her lost long, her long lost grandchild. She seems to have very she seems very different to the boars you've met so far on the bus. Her schooling shakes you out of your nervous panic. It's so good to have you here. I noticed you're taken by our local fountain. It was built in 1704 by Abdul Necrotis, favorite artist and friend of Charles Dexter Tillinghast, the founder of Innsmouth. The central figure was a present and supposed to commemorate the travels together to Cairo. Or Cario, as you can clearly see the Egyptian influences in Nocrates' work here and here. She points widely in every direction and here. I'm sure you've already noticed it yourself. You like someone who loves, knows his way around art, she says with a wide smile. You're still in shock. She beams at you. Uh, who the hell are you? Of course, I'm an art historian. I'm oh, sorry I haven't introduced myself. I'm so sorry. In front of you now stands a small, plump person in a tasteless costume. Your rudeness doesn't seem to curb her enthusiasm in the slightest. Her name is Muriel Pooping Place. I'm the director of the Parts Commission, Chief Tourism all Officer, and head of the Welcoming Committee. Ta da! Behind me here was a ranch hat, wooden information stand, lovingly decorated with balloons. A colorful painted sign reads, Welcome to Innsmouth. Muriel tiptoes over to her information stand, picks up a whole load of flyers. She looks down at all the paper in her arms and briefly shrieks with laughter. My goodness, why don't you take the city map to begin with? Useful. You take the map and put it into your coat pocket. Would you like to find out more about your wonderful town, which has awarded the East Coast Stunning Town Award for several years in a row? And would you... Actually, I'm looking for somebody. Yeah, actually, I'm looking for... Here I am. <laughs> she starts to giggle. Innsmouth welcomes you warmly, so you're looking for someone. It's not that uncommon for two lonely hearts to find one another in this romantic place. She winks at you, uh... Ew, no, man. <laughs> Ain't no way. Man, if I click this and it actually starts to let me do this shit. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I've already found someone, you whisper in the woman's ear and then lean back to give her a little wink. She blushes and starts fanning herself with the brochures in her hand. <laughs> oh, you, you're such a flirt. Keep flirting, oh my god. You start shifting your weight around and try out some postures that you've practiced in front of the mirror precisely for this occasion. Needing to flirt with an older woman by now, Muriel's ran the face and keeps fanning herself and giggling like a schoolgirl from the 1950s. 
You cheeky fella, I think I know exactly where you'll be able to enjoy yourself. <laughs> she hands you a small white card, the Wet Grotto, a honky tr a honky tonk near the harbor of Innsmouth. This is impressive. Did the lady just manage to turn your attempt to flirting into a tourism? Ho oh, ho ho! Hell yeah, that's funny as hell. Thank God, I'm about to say man, that's gonna be weird as shit. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, ma'am. Muriel seems to like that nothing gives me more pleasure than ensuring visitors have a great time in a pretty little town. We'll be staying a few nights. I only recommend staying as long as you can. There's so much to see. Trust me, by the end of your stay, you won't want to. You won't want to leave. Oh, how long are you gonna stay? One week. Uh, I'll say a week. Oh, how wonderful! Here, take this coupon for the Gilman Hotel. You'll here. You'll find a luxurious 19th century flair and can. Expect this sophisticated service. Uh, she winks at you and hands you another colorful flyer. Okay, okay. Let's see here. You've had enough now. You point your wrist while backing away. Still much to see, you know. Thanks again ever so much. Her eyes move past you and settle on the tourist family right behind you. Seemingly, the flicker, like a flick of the switch, she is back to her gleeful demeanor, bouncing over to the family and waving her brochures. Okay, okay. You head further into town along the cob the cobbled road in the direction of the coast. Not long ago the sun was bright in the sky, but already the first wafts of mist are creeping into the stairs or the streets. The air feels thicker and the sun can no longer penetrate the fog. Time to think about where you want to go. You slow down, you lean your briefcase against the wall and start pacing up and down the quiet alleyway. You've got an important choice to make right now. The city center is in the north. Even from afar, you can see outlines of old, ordinarily decorated buildings in the main square. Here you, f you should find the police station, the shopping street, and of course the town hall. And a coastal town, Innsmouth, also has a harbor. From your research, you found out that this is a bustling area with a dreamy beach. You should expect there to be mostly tourists. According to your research, there's only one hotel in the town. The Gilman Hotel is located in the old town. You think about checking in, you could do with a refresh or freshening up and getting rid of that bus smell that is still clinging to your clothes. Just as you're about to set up your heart leaves until your throat, you've forgotten your briefcase. This has never happened to you. You usually take care of the the, the you usually take good care of the little one you possess. Um, there's nothing you can do about it now. You'll have to wait till your return journey to find out whether someone has handed it to lost or found. Still, you can swear that briefcase was already gone when you got off the bus. Let's see here. You decide on, I guess the hotel. Fuck it. Um, the Gilman Hotel. You recognize the roof from afar. After the long wall is now before you in full splendor, the Gilman Hotel it is at least it's easy to see once. It must have been a gorgeous building. The hotel resembles an old English country estate. Uh, it would be suited for the setting of a very predictable film about teenagers and chainsaw killers. <laughs> Wild and withered ivy has firm grip on the walls and obscures the details of the richly decorated facade. The gallery of gargoyles melted into unreal shapes. An acid rain, acidic pigeon droppings line the roof. Many window panes have been neglected for years. There are two cars in the parking lot. A vintage car with large rust spots and a large gray van. That's not creepy as fuck. Uh, the kind of van you've always been warned about as a child. Walk around the hotel, go towards the main entrance. You look, you really hope the inside of the hotel is look, has been looked at after a little better than the outside. You're quickly disabused of that notion. The massive wooden door is difficult to open. Shouldn't the staff be doing this anyway? The loud creaking sound from the hinges. You wonder if guests have, are even welcome in this place. <laughs> the room is sparsely lit and there's pressing chandeliers hanging from the ceiling, which if working would perhaps not give the Grand Hall back to its original splendor, but at least convey more warmth. Your first steps tell that you're there on rotten floorboards hiding under a thick carpet. The green wall paneling and wallpaper are also appear rotten and musty. Ugh. Sort of wet. No way am I going to check in this moldy dump. Go to reset. Fuck it. It's the only hotel, man. Fucking... Oh, he creepy as shit looking. Before you let yourself get distracted by the question of interior design and the associated health issues, you walk purposely toward the reception desk. A small greenish creature stands behind the counter, a loudly humming ceiling lamp above harshly 
illuminates his shadow and gives you his face hard edges. You can make out every individual speck of dust and dandruff in his green, his dark green velvet collar and crooked shoulders. Maybe they'll they be dimming the lights after all. <laughs> The figure smiles at your path is more of a grin. His face unsettles you. You lean forward in an angle to get a better look at him. The corners of the mouth reach out to his dried ears. His smile looks like it's painted on. His beady little his beady eyes lie deep in a in the cavity of his skull, and it seems to me to stare into an opposite direction. Uh and on top of it all he smells funny. How may I help you? You start out and take a step back. Welcome to Gilman Hotel. My name is Cornelius Gilman the third. I may be a service to you. The man's gaze remains a change. His unnatural smile seems to be etched into his face. You're surprised that he could talk with the expression on his face. Just a few moments ago, you could have sworn he was an inanimate puppet. Uh, it's just not when he's speaking. Just like now when he's not speaking. What's wrong with your face? You have beautiful eyes. I would like to book a room, please. <laughs> you begin and manage not to blurt out in a different hotel. Perfect. The Gilman Hotel is delighted to uh, be able to welcome you as its guest. May I ask whether you're in Ismith for business or pleasure? How long will you be staying with us? Would you prefer a view towards the beach or skyline for an exciting town? When would you like to be woken up? Do you sleep deeply? Are you traveling alone? Do you have family? Who knows that you're here? Can I interest you in our spa, fitness, and wellness activities? Would you like to subscribe to our newspaper? Oh, what the hell? How long can you hold your breath? Uh, I don't know, man. If I say Muriel sends me, I feel like I'm going to get fucking killed. Funny story, I've been able to breathe underwater since I was a child. Uh, Muriel sends me. Muriel has recommended us. Brilliant. In addition to your room booking, you will receive the luxury wellness package, Caligia, free of charge. The concierge smiles. The kind of smile that lets you doubt whether in fact this is a good deal he gets out his pen let's get you checked in uh none of the options written right in none of your business business pleasure wink wink uh fuck what you, i'll say pleasure fuck it how long will you be staying with us uh for about a week uh favorite va favorite view you right in there <laughs> i'm not writing the view of your room wink wink view of the city would you like to be woken up? Uh, no, I'm good. Do you sleep deeply? Uh, as deeply as my feelings for you, I never sleep. Are you traveling by yourself? Maybe tonight I won't be by myself. Wink, wink. Do you have family? Uh, I wish to start a family. I have this goldfish called Al. My family's none of your business. Who knows that you're here? Oh, uh, yeah, Al knows. Can I interest you in our spa and fitness and wellness activities? Do you like going to the steam room? Sure. Um, would you like to subscribe to our newsletter? I do not want to subscribe to your newsletter. No, 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 no. I will kill someone. I will kill anyone who tries to get me to subscribe to their cursed newsletter. Uh, I'm going to say no, 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 no. How long can you hold your breath? Oh, that's, that's a weird fucking question, man. I've been able to hold it since I was a child. Are we done now? Can I get in my room? The concierge's expression did not change a tiny bit during the duration of the conversation. Let alone did he blink. Thank you very much. That is all I need to know. Now all you need to do is sign here. He tilts his head, strangely shaped head, over to his guest register. Impatiently, you sign J Doe XXX Noob Slayer. Your real name. Oh, uh, well, I'm not a damn John Doe, so real name. Sadly, we're all booked up this season. There's only one spare room. Here's your key for room 666. Enjoy your stay. You look at the key, which has magically appeared on the counter in your eyes. Slowly, you wonder the past the man in the hall where countless other keys are hanging. Oof. Okay, what now? Uh, I guess go to my room. Shit. Uh you look at the golden panel with the layout of the different rooms. Room 666, there it is, fourth floor, left wing of the building. You walk up the stairs to the upper floors, but you can still feel the eyes of the concierge on you. Panting, you finally reach your door. Almost endless corridor span spreads out uh, in front of you. At the other end, you can see a figure who does not seem as lost as you are. Didn't the building look much smaller from the outside? You walk down the corridor when you notice the figure approaching you. Your brain is preparing itself for a band hotel small talk, but wait, it's you. 
you walk a bit farther and realize you're standing in front of a mirror. That's why the corridor looks a vast. A mirror marks a fork. According to the room numbers, your room should be farther to the left. In the corridor towards the right, you can see a small yellow sign that says, on the floor that says maintenance. Uh, what do you do? Walk around the other... I'm going to go to my room. Fuck it. After two more confusing turns and giant mirrors, you reach room 666. Finally, you're going to drop your stuff and take a good nap. Good plan. Of course, the door resists being open. You jerk the key back and forth and the lock until you hear a satisfying clicking sound. The smoothing warmth hits you and you enter the room. Immediately, the, the, the synapses in your brain switch to emergency saving mode. The trip to Innsmouth has probably taken more out of you than you thought. You don't even notice the rest of the room. That's sketchy as hell. At the the slide of the bed makes you yearn for it. Nah, unpack first, bro. That's right, you're supposed to be doing something. A little girl needs to be found. The reward for it needs to be paid into your bank account. It's only when you march to the closet you realize you have nothing to unpack. After your briefcase mysteriously disappeared, all you have left is a very basic survival kit. A toothbrush and travel bottles and various care products you had stuffed into your coat pockets in a rush. You go into the bathroom and position your treasures around the sink. A handful of ice-cold water is enough to refresh you. Good thing you didn't go straight to bed. Who knows, you might have never woken up again. Now that you feel a little more refreshed, you leave the bathroom to survey your tiny kingdom. Your place is furnished only with the bare necessities. Your bed is flaked with by a chest of drawers. At the window, there is a desk with carved ornaments. Next to the bathroom, there is a huge, massive dark wardrobe that extends all the way up to the ceiling. The yellow flooring wallpaper is slowly detaching itself from the walls in some places, and on the wall you can see a range of paintings with elaborately decorated frames. What do you do now? Uh, open the window, fuck it. After a day out investigating, you had no desire to return to this stuffy room tonight. At least open the window let some fresh air into the room. The window lock is unnecessarily complicated crank that you turn around aimlessly for a while until you understand how the mechanism works. What do, you, what, do you, what do you want to do now? Examine the pictures more closely. This, Since this room has not been equipped with a television, you're left with art as your only entertainment. The first picture shows a ship in a choppy sea. The motif looks familiar but pretty. The impressive fight of the small ship and the huge force of the nature half hidden in the background. You can spot a small spot of light. You have to squint and walk up even closer to make it out. A lighthouse, Some even some of the elements of the town are visible. Could this be Innsmouth? You turn to the next picture and immediately take an involuntary step back. You're looking at a grouchy, weather-beaten man. The embodiment of decided to compete with the captain's cap. Full gray beard. The painter of this work opted for a frontal perspective rather than a more advantage side angle. His head slightly raised. The man's piercing gaze fixed on something in the far distance. A sparkle of light drowns his sinister eyes. Odd choice for the hotel decor. The third and last picture hangs on the wall. An idyllic view of the beach... On a quiet day, a pair of lovers with their backs to the viewer. He is wearing a white uh, shirt. She is wearing a yellow dress. The two of them are in, in an embrace on sand dune towards the horizon. This image fills you with profound sense of calm. What do you want to do? I guess leave. Hell, fucking ain't nothing else I can do. You're reasonably be refreshed again, ready to face the town, armed only with your wallet, your mobile phone, and the photo of the little girl. You step onto the corridor and lock the door. You turn at the first fork, then left, again, right. Anxious to get out, you suddenly find yourself at a dead end. Trying a few other left-right combinations. You finally, you finally find the golden sign on the wall that shows you the way to the stairs. As you walk to the spire, the circling stairs, you look at the reception on the first floor. The eerie, almost mechanical smile of conjurer greets you. It's as if he's been nothing better to do than watch your every move. <laughs> you arrive downstairs, you decide to head directly to the exit. <laughs> Discussing details of your accommodation seems like a waste of your time. Quick, with quick steps, you hurry out of the building and you can still feel the eyes on him. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Time to go look for Tab. But the, your investigation leads you to the town center, I guess. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, the town square. So I think this is a good place to end it. I don't know what the hell's gonna come after this, but I want y'all to be with me every step of the way because this is this is kind of funny. I kind of like this. Um, so we have, I'm thinking, I might straight up, every time I get the option, I'm just going to flirt with whoever I'm talking to. 
Flake. Eventually, I might go back to the Kanji and flirt with that motherfucker too, just just for the hell of it. <laughs> but I don't think it would have bothered him much. Like, I, you know, I don't think no one was gonna come out of that because he didn't give a fuck that I was even talking to him. So like, thinking, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here. Like, we're gonna end it at the town square that way because we know it's saved and shit. Because it says there's 35 chapters in this shit, and I think we've only done like three or four. Like, this this is a lot. <laughs> And, uh, you know, there, we do know there's multiple endings, so that's nice. Um, so I don't know. So I guess we'll just do a playthrough and we'll see how this shit ends. You know, we'll try to get to the very end without dying and shit. Um, cause I don't know how this game's gonna work out or nothing. So, yeah, I think that's how we'll do it. We'll, um, you know, slowly but surely make our way, like, how we just technically this is like our second playthrough because we ended the game twice already but you know like technical wise you know like if we have to restart all the way the fuck over i'm gonna be mad as hell but hopefully we'll start at the checkpoints and shit but essentially though um we're gonna try to get to the very end of the game and just see what it's about and stuff and try to uncover the mystery of Innsmouth. Cause hell, it's <laughs> so far it's a pretty good game. I kind of like it. I like that it's a uh, it's a storybook and it's just like you know, you're flipping through the pages and shit. Like I, I like games like this for some reason. But uh, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. Y'all be safe and y'all have fun. And I will catch you on the next one. See you then.